Hi, I'm Professor Scott Sampson, and this is a basic introduction to PCN analysis. Uh, there's information in the book and additional information on my website, services.byu.edu. So, here's what your mission is. Your mission is to document a service operation, identify sources of value in that operation, identify process problems, which could be efficiencies and other costs, maybe potential service failures, or flaws in the customer experience and then explore possible process improvements and identify opportunities for innovation. So this is, mission is very possible due to the tool that we use called PCN analysis. So what are the basic steps of PCN analysis? Well at a very basic level we need to identify systems entities and roles, those that are participating in the system, document key processes, assess the value proposition, and then generate strategic improvement alternatives. First, let's look at identifying system entity and roles. Now, the example given in the book talked about a customer that goes to a restaurant. So those are two different entities, one being the customer, the other the restaurant, which could include restaurant employees, cooks, and so forth. The customer might also interact in, as part of their service experience with the movie theater. Maybe after dinner they're going to a movie, so there has to be some coordination between eating timing and the movie theater timing and so forth. Uh, they may also interact with a parking lot attendant if they're using paid parking as part of this evening experience. So it's pretty basic to identify entities and roles simply uh, thinking of the various participants in a particular service experience. Number two step is to document key processes and we use a PCN diagram as the tool for this documenting. So some elements of a PCN diagram include a process entity or entities which we've already talked about a little bit there are process domain, which I'll describe in a moment, and process regions. So a process entity is really any entity that participates in a process. We represent process entities through this shape. Looks like a building, but it's not. An entity has a process domain that includes all processes that are performed directly, or they're directed or controlled by that entity. So in the case of our pizza restaurant, this is the example from the book, some of the parts of the process that fall within the process domain include developing recipes, identifying ingredients, negotiating supply contracts, forecasting supply needs, ordering supplies online perhaps, receiving those supplies, maintaining supplies, taking an order, cooking their pizza based on that order from the customer, preheating ovens, uh, the arrows here indicate dependency so when an arrow points from one step to another it says that the prior step has to be accomplished before a subsequent step can be accomplished. And then serving the pizza is kind of the uh, end of this part of the process, the restaurant process. Now you'll see that there are these vertical lines here. These vertical lines delineate different regions of the process domain and there are three. At the outer edges there's the region of direct interaction, interacting with suppliers or customers. So on the left we see negotiating a supply contract, interacting person to person with a supplier, on the right side, taking an order and serving the pizza, those are interacting with the customer in that case. A little closer in, we have the region of surrogate interaction. This means we're not interacting with the customer directly, but we're interacting with a, a resource of the customer or of a supplier. So ordering supplies online is not interacting necessarily person to person with the supplier, but interacting with their technology. Or in the case of cooking the pizza, you're not actually cooking the customer, you're cooking the customer's order, so it's based on customer information, so that's surrogate interaction. And finally, in the middle, we have the region of independent processing. These are steps that are acting on resources that are owned and controlled by the uh, entity whose process domain this is. So we have these three regions of the process domain. The shape at the top of a process domain, uh, the triangle there, helps us think about process control. Steps in the region of independent processing have a great deal of control on behalf of the uh, process entity, whereas as you move to regions of surrogate and direct interaction, the entity has to cede control to other entities, so they have less control in the process. So in summary, we have direct interaction, which is person-to-person -person interaction, surrogate interaction, which is uh, an entity acting on a resource of another entity, not person-to-person, -person. and finally independent processing, it's an entity acting on their own resources that they own and control. So let's go back to our PCN diagram here for the restaurant. And as you imagine, this is just one entity, but service processes always involve more than one entity. So we could see perhaps another entity here, which could be a supplier. They have a process domain and all types of process steps that might 
uh, interface in some way with the restaurant's process domain. Of course, there's also the customer. The customer has a process domain and all types of steps that go into their domain. So if we slide this over, we can actually see in the customer's process domain, the customer is doing things such as developing an appetite, and they come to the restaurant, wait to be seated, and so forth. Uh, subsequent to the experience with the restaurant, they return home and eat leftovers and so forth. So here we have the restaurant has steps in their process domain, and the customer has steps in their process domain, and in between we have those steps that are shared between the process domains. And that's really the essence of managing a service operation, is we identify steps within the process domains and the interactions that take place and determine ways to optimize those steps. So the final part of this, which is to identify uh, problems and strategic improvement opportunities, is uh, something that you may do as an assignment as part of studying this course.